Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to part two of Day and I Daily number 392, where we learn to be a better gamer. And check out this shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Christmas shirt. Yes. <laughs> I figure since we're doing rapid reading of, um, of the good old Protoss builds, <laughs> why not do one of my favorite Protoss players, Artosis, Two things, uh, just to note, he is streaming right now. For any of you who did not know, go check out his stream. I think it's just twitch.tv slash artosis. He does this amazing thing where he plays over on the Korean server, and in between every game he analyzes. So in honor of rapid reading to the, uh, he's pretty much like my favorite caster ever, to artosis, I dedicate the remainder of rapid reads to you. In part number one, we introduced the basics of the idea of just getting reads and trying to deduce what your opponent is doing. Um, in part number two, we're going to speed it up and make it a lot faster. And we're going to try to use all those techniques that we uh, talked about in part number one. In particular, should I attack, expand, or tech? Which one of those should I do? Attack, expand, tech. Cool. And if for some reason a huge scary thing's coming, only then shall we shit our pants. Excellent. Let's go ahead and pop back into part number two. Let's speed it up. Speed it up. All right, cool. What can our opponent be doing and what are, can our opponent not be doing? Pretty much zero chance at all of watching, or um, zero chance at all of any sort of drop coming in. None whatsoever. Looks like we do have a sentry here for a little bit of added poking. I would not overthink these Blink Stalker plays. You can just run away with Blink, which is what makes it great. That's sort of one of those tactical thoughts that we want to think about only, um, or that we can think about, and it's, wow, my brain is not functioning. Let me try it one more time. Sure, Blink Stalkers can always run away, which is what makes them good for poking and prodding, but that's one of those nitty gritty granular tactical things. I want to talk about the big picture reading of our opponents. Cool. That's what I want to focus on. Whew, that was hard to say. So as we speed the game up, no doubt making my encoder begin to sweat. Cool, we are putting more pressure on. What can our opponent be doing? Well, he can pretty much be just about now starting to get that drop tech up. I still think that given everything we have, uh, still continuing to tech makes absolute sense. Continuing to try to hurl some DTs out for defense also makes sense. I would probably take another expansion right now, but getting these Zealot with charge legs seems pretty important given what our opponent is up to. Now it's time to start to begin the defense. I still might try to be expanding right around now. Uh, I actually see no problem with trying to throw down an expansion a little bit earlier. And remember, Blink Stalker is always good. I'm not too worried about any other sort of nitty grittiness. Easy peasy. Let's go into another game. What I want to do is watch one more Protoss vs. Terran from none other than Liquid Hero, who actually I believe is streaming right now. Um, I want to then do some PvPs. Oh, because Protoss vs. Protoss is a little bit trickier of a matchup to do. So let's go ahead and swim on into things. His opponent is a live torpedo. Cool. Uh, I'm sure he tried to do... Uh, is that just Torpedo with a capital P? Tor... Tor... Pedo. Pedo is not something you want to emphasize in the name Torpedo. But, you know, that's fine. He's a Korean player. It's not a big deal. OGS Hero is going to do something absolutely bonkerville in this PvT. And after this game, we're going to watch some PvP. Cool! We see a simulator first from OGS Hero, aka Liquid Hero. And Liquid Hero is going to begin scouting. What could our opponent be doing? Anything at all. So our good friend Alive Torpedo Bear spawning here at the left position will get scouted. We pop on in. Alright, cool. Can an early expand happen? Yes. Uh, can some sort of early attack happen? Probably. Can, will he be following this up with a factory? Yeah, he could be. Um, but most most of all, we're probably going to be a little bit worried about some kind of early aggression. That's what we need to start worrying about. So do we attack, um, expand, or tech? I'd be a little bit leery about doing the expanding or the teching routes. We've probably got to make some units. And we try to do this little hidden Stargate thing. We get spotted right off the bat. 
and suddenly we see OGS Hero. He's going to try to do a, a little bit of aggressioning, but he ends up walking right into a Marauder. Now, I want you to note that we've already gotten some good information. One, two, three Marauders. This is quite helpful for us. Be aware of the kind of information you're getting. At this point in time, I would not, uh, it's important to note, he can't really be getting another factory. He can't really be doing too much teching. He's gotten a lot of Marauders up right now. He could be doing two barracks aggression. I would probably pin him on double aggression, maybe even a second tech lab, or I would pin him on an expand. But in particular, I'm suddenly thinking to myself, I don't really need a robo. Rapid reading. And of course, we spot the command center, which helps a, a whole shit ton, so excellent. Now we do see a second gateway coming down. We gotta go ahead and make some units. And there's the expand coming up by Hero. It's not just a straight expand, it's an expand with two gateways. And these gateways are gonna remain fairly active. We have the stalkers here ready to pick off any sort of scout. Here's the warp in. No delay at all with getting that warp gate. And now a stargate popping down. Now here is kind of an interesting idea. Notice we are building the stargate and we have seen an expansion. So, this is a sensible thing to do. We see an expand, or we see some marauders. We've probably got to get some defense up, as you'll know. Um, but he expanded, so that means we have a little bit of time to do some teching of our own. Now, with this going on, this is suddenly holy crap time. Now, this battle is going on, and I'm going to do something that is oh so fun. Right as some more stalkers get warped in, and we barely manage to hold it off. I'm going to ask you right now, what does the opponent have? Rapid reads. Rapid reads. Come on, let's do it. Rapid freaking reads. What does he have? How many units does he have? I would imagine he has no more than one Marauder and two Marines back home. Why? He built a lot of Marauders at the start and he expanded. That's got to delay all the rest of his buildings. Um, this is a pretty big attack. The simplest way to say it is a lot of expensive units early means not a lot of other units back here. And as we go to the every cam, um, yeah, he actually, I, I, I overestimated. He actually has one Marine, not two. Cool. Cool. Excellent. Sweet. So as you hold this off, as you hold this off, notice what I just did. He held it off. What does he have? Almost nothing. Why? Because he attacked us. If he attacked us and we killed off the attack, he has to have almost nothing. Time to either tech or time to expand. Why those two? Because he didn't have any units to attack us. And you might say, why not attack? Why not? Why not? Because there's no real guarantee that we can do damage. We might be able to do damage, but I want you to get out of the habit of attacking when you know you are under no pressure. Think of expanding first. I'd probably put expanding as the number one most important thing to throw out there. So we're going to see OGS Hero do some very fancy fun stuff with a Shtar Gate. But doing these sorts of pokes, like maybe poking up to here, sending a probe in, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Still building a lot of probes. I'd be spending most of my Chrono Boost on them probies. I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. This Zealot and this Sentry, nothing wrong with this sort of precautionary measure. Because hell... We, um, we know that Guardian Shield is good, should he ever choose to attack. I'm going to speed this up. I don't know how much I agree with getting these gateways right now. Look at that. Five gateways right now. Why would I disagree with this? I'll back up just slightly to when the Phoenixes are moving out. Why do I disagree with this? He just lost his attack, so we have time. He's getting Phoenixes. Phoenixes buy us more time because we're harassing, keeping him pinned back. So, I would be much more inclined to maybe build one or two gateways rather than a full five total and try to take an expand. I would try to tech. Probably teching is the most reasonable thing I'd do. Pop a forge down or something like that. We see another command center held in even longer time, so now I'm really wanting to tech or expand because I am everything I'm doing is time buying, time buying, time buying. There's, these little, uh, there's a little attack that our opponent is doing right now but I want you to take note of something. These gateways are just now finishing up. Even with this sort of little pressureful attack, where we lost two stalkers for nothing, we're going to be able to hold this attack off without really that much problem. 
Sure, a couple guys stay alive. We could have controlled our stuff in mid a, a snedge better. And this is marginally annoying, but... We're, we still have a ton of time now. Huge amounts of time bought with these phoenixes, with this other thing up, and now we're even under pressure to do that. What can he not be doing? He can't be dropping. He can't possibly be getting dropped that soon. He has attacked, he's expanded. Hell, we've gotten a chance to poke into his base. Only these sorts of huge attacks can really be happening. And you see Hero, he's moving out to attack. I don't really... I think it's fine to try to secure the center, but just trying to move out aggressively like this, in this sort of situation, I do not like that much. I really... It hurts me. It hurts my soul. So now we need to start speeding it up. We need to start speeding things up. Now, here's a question. Should we attack, tech, or expand? What are your thoughts? What can he be doing and what can't he be doing? Well, um, in here, well, he's probably got more barracks up right now. He's probably starting to get those medevacs up. Suddenly, I feel like we really need to... Our plan to expand is going to be a lot more dangerous right now. And let's also try to get an estimate of his army size. How many... Um, how many medevacs does he have? How many marines and marauders does he have? I'm going to estimate two to four medevacs and probably four marauders, ten marines. Uh, whoa! Most ridiculous, sick overestimate of all time. Whoa! Did I overestimate that? Holy crap, was my radar off. And this is one of those things that you will end up finding a lot of the time. Right when you end up holding these attacks off, in-game, you will mentally perceive your opponent to have tons of stuff. And then when you say out loud what you think he can have, you're always like, oh. Whoa. Whoa. Blows your freaking mind. Coming back to the hero cam. Hero expands. And I want you to know, what I just did right now is a straight-up bad read. I said he probably has a lot of drop, he probably has a lot of production facilities. I was actually envisioning six barracks done with add-ons, and he actually only has five with three add-ons. And with that in mind, with my bad read of him having this um, starport done, with him having all these barracks done, I was like, yeah, an expand seems like a really bad idea. We actually kind of need to start going into getting a bigger army mode. We really need to start focusing on units. As it turns out, way, way off radar. And that's why it is so important to begin double-checking your reads against reality. To do those sanity checks, as I like to call them. Really, really atrocious read right there. Which is helpful, because awesome. Now, in the future, when I'm starting to get attacked a lot, I'll have a better sense of exactly how much stuff he can have. Things being a little bit out of position here. Ended up being the demise of this Nexus. We still end up crushing this attack pretty badly. But, pobre Nexus, pobre Nexus. And now, at this point in time, our poor tragic hero, OGS hero, has suffered so many losses. There's so many barracks up right now, and the upgrades are coming down the pipeline. I tragically inform you that Liquid Hero dies shortly thereafter. <sighs> he dies very, very quickly. Why am I going ahead and skipping over that? Because we're pretty much dead at that point, and it's less important to... Um, it's really important to be able to abandon analysis at that point in time when you're really kind of clearly screwed, when it's like three base versus two base, and he's doubling your food and all that other sort of tragic stuff to just sort of... Done watching! Because that's what you'll end up doing in your own replays. Now, this is going a little bit longer than I'd thought, so we're going to do one PvP game, take a break, and then do another PvP game. There is a bit of important info to say about the way mirror matchups feel, and the, it's specifically the way PvP feels, that there's this really gross feeling of saying, alright, I figured out a build where I can get a forge and cannons and then expand, and it's safe against all early attacks. But yeah, then your opponent sees and then expands with no forge. He does the same thing that you're doing, except without all this extra defense. And then he's in amazing shape, like way ahead. This happens all the freaking time in this matchup, where you're like, all right, well, I'm going to go blink, and I'm going to try to be safe with my, my blink play. And you sit back, and then you get um, an immortal to defend, and then your opponent did the exact same thing 
Oh, gosh, but he didn't get any of this extra defense. Most notably, when players go one base Colossus versus one base Colossus, and one player got no Immortal, no Observer, and spent only his gas, or spent his gas only on Colossi, and you feel screwed. Ugh. The key that I'm going to note is to attack. The big key in this matchup of Protoss versus Protoss is to be aggressive about attacking. This is where reads become very important. Let's go to the OGS hero cam. What are immediately things that we're um, wanting to worry about? We might really be worried about something like um, Forgate. We might be worried about Forge two gates in the middle of the map. Maybe not so much, but probably the Forgate or a lot of early aggression is the big one. So let's start being really meticulous with these reads. Even though we're going at kind of warp speeds. Oh, and look at the little heart. Or I guess this is more of a cardioid for you math nerds. Nothing out of the ordinary here. We don't try to steal the gas so much. We're just sort of poking and prodding, harassing. Mm, do we see a zealot? Do we not? Well, we just see a lot of energy there. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the alt button so that way we can see everything that's going on in here. And there's this potential battle for this gas geyser. We do build one zealot. And we see the double chrono boost. And we have not yet seen uh, a zealot from our opponent. Cool. So, this is a, a key point in time where it is critical to attack. Wow, our opponent got a really light zealot. Is our zealot that late? Oh, our zealot's stuck. Ooh, that sucks. Holy crap, does that suck or what? Wow! Oh, look at that zealot. Youch, that stinks. So everything is going about as wrong as possible for Liquid Hero. He starts attacking this pylon, and then I think he actually realizes that he desperately needs that pylon to stay up. Yeah, he goes ahead and just leaves it up. So right now, we are in the dark as Liquid Hero. We've even been spotted in our own base. And watch what Hero does. He's going to hold the middle, and watch the movement of his Stalker. Here comes some extremely important subtle stuff. We haven't seen our opponent make any attempt at the middle. Where is our opponent going to want to build proxy pylons if he's being really aggressive early? Here is a good place. Building one here in the center is a good place. Building one here is a really good place. Occasionally you can sweep this corner for some more uh, probes, but we already killed off that start probe. Do we tech? Uh, do we expand? Well, attacking is an incredibly good way to get information. We want to tech. We want to get some sort of uh, something else up. So now we're moving out, and we see this moment right here. Close to six minutes is when four gates finish. We're at 544, and we see nothing here. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? We can very comfortably begin teching. Expanding is always a little dicey in the matchup, but expanding would be absolutely fine right here. This would be an absolutely fine thing to do. Look at how aggressively positioned these stalkers are. What is my opponent doing? Probably some sort of robo play or blink play. We're getting a robo up ourselves. It's probably going to be some sort of tech-oriented play. Look, we kill off the guy in the middle, and our stalkers are continuing to be quite aggressive. Look at this, splitting up the stalkers. Look at that, that's pretty nuts. This sort of attacking is so key. And look at this, boldly waltzing towards the front and we see this sort of thing, this formation. We see a single sentry, we see a good amount of stalkers. As a matter of fact, Hero is gonna be going for a warp prism play. <laughs> Probably partly because he trapped one of his own zealots, yuck. But I want you to just be aware right now of how important all the stalker aggression was at the start of that. And all the timing. Even things like if you're at 5 minutes and 30 seconds and you, you're in the middle of the map and you don't see him in the middle of the map. Boom! You are pretty damn confident that he's not foregating. Or at the very least not being super aggressive against you early. So he could be going for some sort of robo play. I'm probably going to call robo or blink. Um... There we have some more stalkers coming up. So if he's going robo or blink, we can just secure the front of our base. And we are going to be very delighted if we po if we po poke in here right now 
What could he possibly be doing? Well, if he's blinking, then he's going to want to be aggressive. He's not going to be going defensive blink. And as we poke in here, yep, there's the blink observer play. This ends up being very, very effective. And notice the immediate pullback to the back of the base. Going to try to kill off this observer, but suddenly this region becomes important to guard against blinks. And yeah, this is uh, effective and fun and all that sort of good jazz. So, what now? If he's going Blink Stalker, well, OGS here does the smart thing, and he's going to make a ton of Immortals. Before we go ahead and step into the break, as it turns out, these games are taking longer than we'd imagine. As we go ahead and step into the break, think about what should Hero do now? Should he begin attacking, expanding, teching? And for whatever answer you choose, think of how you'd go about doing it. 